Well, the five discipline framework um, emerged over about a decade. Um, and it was a particular type of synthesis of many different tools and approaches that had developed over that decade or so. Um, my own background, my training is in understanding complexity in systems, understanding complex social realities. So that notion of systems awareness, systems thinking was always one cornerstone. But as we got into more and more practical work, uh, keep in mind the period of time when the five disciplines was coming together was roughly 1980 to 1990, so that decade. And during that time, we had built up a small set of partnerships, particularly with, a, with very innovative businesses. And we were together sort of co-creating tools, methods, and approaches that could really be used practically in those businesses. So gradually, even though uh, the systems thinking was always a starting point because of my background, we quickly realized that the whole creative orientation, what I was talking about a little earlier ago, the, 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 the spark of imagination, vision, you know, something we're really passionate about, what are we aspiring towards, was really, really important. And that evolved into the uh, discipline of personal mastery um, and also building shared vision. So the vision, just take vision as one element, always has to be deeply personal, because if it's not personal, it doesn't really mean anything to us. But of course, the visions that really matter for any enterprise or society become shared. We also gradually started to realize that the whole importance of reflection, how we moderate the pace of a business, so it's not always just moving, 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 but there's time to think there's time to pause, was really, really important. And that importance of reflection really became the underpinnings of mental models and team learning and the importance of dialogue, the quality of conversation. So it's always hard in, uh, in hindsight to say exactly how things happen, but it's never a simple linear progression. But gradually through the decade of the 1980s, the idea of these five disciplines kind of came together. Personal mastery, building shared vision, uh, reflecting on mental models, team learning, and as I say, always we'd had this foundation of systems thinking. And, and then the last part of the process became literally the word discipline. Um, because the word discipline in English, and I suspect it's pretty similar in France, actually gets used in, in different ways. So uh, uh, a parent to their child, you know, you need to be disciplined. A teacher to the students, you need to be quiet. That often is the colloquial way we use the word discipline. But in fact, the word comes from a Latin root, and disciplina, the Latin root, it was probably the oldest and most commonly used word uh, for learning. So a completely different use of the word discipline would be, for example, an artist. You may have a lot of artists, artistic talent, but do you have the discipline to develop that talent? And the same is true of all learning. At some level, there's a personal discipline. There's a commitment to regular practice. There's a commitment to self-criticism, to seeing, you know, well, I might think this is great, but the people out there, they don't think it's so good. How do I deal with external points of view without destroying my own inspiration and my own ideas? So this is the role of discipline in the arts. So it's, it's a very different use, and we realized that was a great term because we always had started with a lot of focus on tools and methods. Tools and methods are great, they're essential, but it's not the tools that produce the change. It's the way the tools are used by tool users, human beings, who use them as vehicles for their own development. So that's where the word discipline came together and it became kind of a good integrating term for all these different collections of tools and methods.